Hey guys, welcome back to Mishmas. I am doing the best of 2021 luxury makeup today. So <laughs> I'm looking at this gigantic pile of makeup in front of me. This is gonna be a long video. I'm so excited. I'm feeling chatty. I'm gonna do what I did last year because I think that went over really well with you guys. So for this video, I remember last year I was trying to decide how I was uh, gonna present the information and how uh, what I was going to include. And so I decided that I was only going to include the products that were released that year. So that's what I'm doing again. We're just talking about products that were released in 2021 and I am going to do another, like just my all time favorite luxury makeup, which I think a lot of people do for this video as well. Like just all time favorites or whatever, it's, it's like their best of. But I really wanted to focus on what was released this year because there's just so much makeup. <laughs> so, so much makeup. So that's what we are doing quite literally is the best of 2021. So I have basically one, <laughs> one thing for each category. Uh, some categories I don't have anything like primer, the primers that I've been loving, none of them came out this year. They're all, you know, relatively old. So I'm not even going to talk about primer, um, but I do have like one or two products for some categories. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start with foundation. And any of the products that I actually have on my face and wear, I'm going to cut away to some B-roll of me actually applying them so you can see them in action. Um, and I'll also point out what it is that I have on my face. So let's start with foundation. So this foundation, I like double checked everywhere because I could have sworn it was released last year, but this was actually released in January, and that is the Chantecaille Future Skin Cushion Foundation. I am wearing shade Vanilla, and yeah, not only has this become like one of my favorite cushion foundations, but this has become one of my favorite foundations uh, pretty much, and actually when I used it today, my cushion is starting to look a little dry there, so I think I'm gonna have to either flip it over or get a refill, but I, Love this foundation. It just makes my skin look soft. There's something about soft skin that I feel like it always looks a little bit filtered. It looks really, really smooth. Um, it looks plush, as my friend here on YouTube, Kate the Great Beauty would say, it looks very plushish. So I feel like this foundation really kind of just does it all. It wears really well. It doesn't have super, super high coverage, but you can build it up, I would say almost to a medium, but I like to use a brush or a sponge and just apply it sort of in a, in a light, light medium way. And you can still see like my sunspots here. So it's not super high coverage, but I really like that. It is very, very healthy, natural, slightly glowing looking. So the finish of it isn't super high glow. It's not matte. It just is this smooth, creamy kind of finish. It's just glorious, absolutely beautiful. So that is my foundation pick for 2021. Now for concealer, you guys know I am a diehard Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer in shade 2N, uh, but that came out last year or the year before. So this year I really fell in love with this concealer and this also is a product that came out earlier in the year and it just sort of fell to the wayside. It actually fell to, literally fell to the back of my drawer. So when I was going through products for this video, I found it and I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is the concealer of 2021. This is the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Brighten and Correct Duo. And I have it in the shade 2N. And so it's a double-ended cream crayon. So on one side, you have a correct, so that is like the peachier side, at least for 2N. And then the Brighton side is actually the side that I have down around my eyes. I have it pretty much like over some of my spots here, just to kind of soften them up a little bit. And I love it. Not only is the shade really great, and they have a very like broad shade range in this uh, line, but the formula is wonderful. As you can see, I'm like tapping it in and it's just melting right onto my skin for a crayon to behave so like weightlessly is really something quite different for me. Usually crayons or like stick concealers, I just feel like they're a little bit thicker and they will eventually blend out. I'm thinking of the Clay de Peau stick concealer. That one is really amazing. Um, but that one has like a little bit of a thicker feel and once you blend it out, it feels great. But this one blends out so much more uh, quickly. It's almost, I don't know, it blends out like it's more emollient, but it really isn't. It just has a very kind of weightless, smooth feel to it. And it's lovely. And it does obviously a great job, I think, concealing. I feel like my under eyes look 
pretty good right now. Uh, so that is the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Brighten and Concealer Duo, my pick for 2021. Okay, next up for powder, you guys are not gonna be surprised because I've been talking about this ever since I got it. This is the LYS Pressed Powder. And I just picked this up at Sephora and it is lovely. It is their Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder in the shade Resilience. And that is the shade now, and that is you know what I have on my face. This powder, I think people have asked me to compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury powder, pressed powder. I think this one is probably a smidgen lighter. So if you have dry skin like I do, I have incredibly dry skin, it is also definitely aging. <laughs> uh, I'm 48, so uh, I don't like a powder that's too heavy. Not like the Charlotte Tilbury powder is heavy at all. That powder is incredibly weightless but there is like a little bit more to it than this one. This one is just a little bit lighter. It does exactly what I needed to do. It mattifies uh, what I need mattified. It sets down my makeup and it's really, really weightless. And this uh, resilience shade is great. It is pretty much undetectable on my skin. So that is my powder pick for 2021. Okay, next up for bronzer slash contour slash Brontour. <laughs> I was debating between uh, the Wayne Goss bronzer palettes and the Victoria Beckham bronzer bricks. Both of these came out this year and I actually started playing around with them a little bit uh, before I filmed because I was like, which one do I look better? Which one works better for my skin tone? And the Wayne Goss ones won out. So these are the Radiance Boosting Face Palettes. And let me explain to you what it was that beat out the Victoria Beckham. So the first thing is, this is the, the light one. So this is light gold. So we have soft gold glow and light taupe. And I love this light taupe because it is a perfect contouring shade. You see how cool it is? So I have this as a contour um, all around my face. I just have it like under my cheekbones and basically around my forehead. And it's just the perfect tone. It's amazing, amazing for that. And the Victoria Beckham ones, those are all just straight up bronzers. So I thought this was a little bit more versatile because then we have this in here, which is a really great bronzer. And I decided to go with the medium palette to bronze. This is satin bronze. And we've got bronze glow and medium taupe in here. And what won me over to the Wayne Goss palettes is that one of these, the um, like sculpt powder in all of the palettes are matte. And then there is a little bit of shimmer to the bronzing powders. And I really, really love that. I just think it looks really healthy. I think if you, for me personally, again, probably because I have dry aging skin, if I use like a matte bronzer all over, it just looks really, I don't know, kind of dusty. And so I like something with a little bit of like a shimmer to it. And so, yeah, these Wayne Goss bronzers just look so, so beautiful on the skin. So again, I have light as like contour and then I have the medium palette uh, bronzer as bronzer all over my face. And I pretty much just dusted it like lightly on my high points. So those are my bronzer picks for the year. Well, the one bronzer pick for 2021, but all of them, all the shades are gorgeous. So I did not have a cream bronzer for 2021. I think there were some new ones that came out. I didn't try any of them. Uh, so we're gonna skip cream bronzer, but I do have cream blush and cream highlight and powder blush and powder highlight uh, to share with you. So my cream blush pick for 2021 are these um, cheeky posh sticks, cheeky blush posh sticks. I can't, <laughs> I'm screwing up the name. Anyway, everything will be listed down below in my description box, but uh, these blush sticks are really, really gorgeous. I love all of the shades. This one that I just pulled out, which is roller skate, is just such a fun, beautiful, bright pop of color. All the other ones are just really gorgeous. Like this one is Playground. This is a really beautiful nude. The formula is great. They stay put. Uh, the pigmentation is there, but it's not too crazy. You know, when it comes to blush, I don't want something that's like overly pigmented. Um, and so they just apply really beautifully. You can apply it with your finger. You can apply it straight from uh, the stick and they just blend out beautifully. Now, these are not um, shimmery or glowy in any way. They definitely lean towards being a little bit more matte, but because they are a cream product, there is like a soft, uh, soft matteness to them and they just look so gorgeous and like cloud-like on the cheeks. And yeah, I just love them. That is definitely my favorite cream blush of 2021. My favorite powder blush of 2021, 
you guessed it, the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Blush Duos. I have all six shades. Uh, I love them. I love them all. I love every single shade. Today I have on Cherry Blaze, which is this duo here. So what I did was I focused the lighter shade like on the apples of my cheeks and kind of brushed it out towards the back and then I focused the deeper shade kind of uh, in the center and back. I kind of tried to do like a little bit of an ombre situation, um, but then I just sort of blended it all together. <laughs> because I love the shade so much. So uh, this is Cherry Blaze. And let me just point out the other two that I've been using quite a bit. This one is Explicit Flush. So I love this. I really love this nude side. And then this side is just really bright and poppy. And then the other one that I have been using a lot is Brazen Rose. So this is the one that came out a little bit later, um, but it is a little bit cooler toned and very pink. So if I'm looking for a cooler tone blush, I've been reaching for this one. I just love the formula. I love the formula. I know none of these shades are terribly groundbreaking, um, but the formula, it just melts into your skin. Look at how beautiful this is. It almost looks like a cream blush, but they're powder blushes, but there's something about this formula. You get the powder on and it just, it almost just like melts onto your skin as if it was a cream and I love it. Love, love, love these blushes. So that is my blush pick for 2021. And then for cream highlight, um, I was actually surprised that this came out in 2021. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, because this is one of those products that once it came into my life, it's like, I don't know what I used before. It's almost like when you get it like, like your new favorite pair of jeans and you just wear them all the time and you're like, what did I wear before I got this? So that's how I feel about this Westman Atelier uh, Lit Up Highlight Stick in Nectar. This cream highlight is the cream highlight that I reach for every time I think that I want a cream highlight. I just love the tone of it. I love the sheen that it gives. It's a very soft satin sheen. This Nectar shade is just gorgeous. It's a soft peach. There's a little bit of like a golden shimmer to it. It is just, so, so beautiful and yeah, and I love it. I'm so glad it's part of our permanent line. So um, that is my favorite uh, cream highlight from 2021. I'm sure you guys could have guessed that. But for my powder highlight, and this is what I have on today, I just am smitten with these. So these are the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powders, but these are the Light Catcher version. So yeah, the full name is Translucent Loose Setting Powder Dash Light Catcher. And so I have, uh, basically like the light and the medium, there's three uh, shades in this and there's a deeper one. So this one, the light one is Celestial Light and then the middle one is Honey Star. So I mix these two. I basically pour a little bit out um, of both into one cap and I just sort of, you know, mix them together and I apply it with a brush and that is the highlight you see here. It is such a gorgeous, gorgeous highlight. And because it is actually what they consider a translucent loose setting powder, which I personally would not use as a setting powder because it is incredibly glowy. I mean, you can see how glowy it is. To have that all over your face, I think is is quite a bit. But if you wanna mix this in with your like loose setting powder, I think it would be really pretty all over. I just wouldn't use this alone <laughs> as a setting powder. It's very like Tin Man territory. So I just like using it as um, highlight. And again, it's those two shades, Celestial Light and Honey Star mixed together that's on my uh, cheekbones there. And I brushed a little bit down my nose and along my forehead. So it's, it's very, very um, soft, very soft looking, but there's a definite shine. It's just really beautiful. Like the way it refracts light is really gorgeous. It's not like super, super metallic, but it is definitely Definitely there. So those are my uh, powder highlight picks for the year. And then for eyebrows, I don't think this is a surprise if you guys have been watching my videos lately. I have fallen head over heels for the Persona Swipe Up Brow Gel. I have it in the shade Charcoal. It is what I have in my brows today. And as you guys know, I love, love, love the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. That one I still enjoy probably a little bit more than this one, but I have heard two stories now about that product. One is that it's being discontinued and two, that it's being reformulated. So that, well, that could actually be the same story. If they're discontinuing the current one and reformulating it and coming out with a new one, I guess that's sort of the same story. So anyway, uh, I was really, really sad when I heard that um, it's out of stock pretty much everywhere. And so I have been searching for uh, a replacement for it. And like I said, while this isn't exactly like the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel, 
I really, really enjoy it. If anything, this is a very, very close second. The only thing I think it's missing are little fibers. And that's what I really love about the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. The gel itself, it's not too loose and thin, but it's not too thick. So it goes on really, you know, kind of seamlessly. It doesn't look chunky, you know what I mean? It doesn't chunk up at all. And then it's got the fibers in there. So it's like, whoop, like all of a sudden your eyebrows like come to life. Oh, that product is so good. I cannot believe they're reformulating it. I really, really hope they don't change it too much. But anyway, this is my brow pick for 2021. It's just lovely. All right, and as for eyeshadow, now this was tough. 2021 was full of a lot of amazing, amazing makeup releases. And <laughs> this I kept going back to my drawer like, no, 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 this one. No, 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 this one. So anyway, what I ended up choosing, selecting to present to you guys is basically a family. So I have just been really impressed with the Dior Quince that have come out this year. And I'm gonna start with the Cruise. The Cruise one, what, which is that one called? Hold on. I have so many here now. This is, okay. It is, oh, it's called Cruise Look. So this one I just think is so beautiful, everyday, easy to wear, gorgeous, <laughs> just all the things. I love it. Um, I can do one and done eye looks with this, this shade, this shade, even this shade if I want kind of like a frosty look. It's just gorgeous. And I love, love, love the Dior Quint formula. Um, so they came out with this one. This was Cruise, Cruise 22. Now I'm confused because I feel like that's really early, but I think this is Cruise 22. Anyway, love that quint. Uh, the other two that I wanted to point out, well, I have four more, but the next two I wanted to point out were part of the Birds of a Feather collection. Now you guys know I don't use colors in either of these quints very often, but I just fell in love with these. I fell in love with the formula. These are baked gelée um, shadows, and I fell in love with the formula. I fell in love with these colors. I feel like the color stories are really unique. Quality of the shadows are really great. I, I just fell in love with these. I just thought that they were so different and creative and you could use these together as like a 10, <laughs> a 10 pan palette. Um, but yeah, I was just really, really impressed with this whole collection and these two quints especially. Um, I know this was limited edition. Um, so is the Cruise 22. Actually, all of these Dior quints I'm gonna talk about are limited edition, but I think they may still be available some places. Anyway, I'll link if they are down below in my description box. Um, and then the more recent quince that they came out with for holiday, um, this one, which is House of Dreams and Atelier Doré. So these two quince I you know, fell in love with. I think that they are really, really easy to use, easy to wear and you can use these two together very easily. So today what I have on my eyes is House of Dreams. And all I did was I mixed these two shades. So the, this one and this one. I just took my brush and went back and forth between the two and I just brushed them all over my lid. That's all I did. And then I took my eyeliner, uh, my Isom T05 brush, and I went into the matte brown shade and I just stamped that as eyeliner around my lash line. And that's it. I mean, these palettes are just, they're so gorgeous. And I love that when you look at them in the pan, you're like, oh, okay, that looks nice. But there's always a little extra something going on with them. Like this one actually has like a purpley pink shimmer to it. Um, this one has like a satin shimmer to it as well. Uh, obviously the silver in here is very, very bright. And I feel like all of the Dior shades are like this. There's always a, like a little something more to them once you get them on the eye or once you swatch them. Um, so yeah, just Dior eyeshadows in general. I feel like they really, really just killed it this year in 2021. And I have to say, I was a little disappointed with like Chanel this year. I was, I guess overall, a little bit disappointed with um, Tom Ford shadows this year. They were okay, um, but nothing like too phenomenal. <laughs> and these Dior's, I feel like just made up for all of it. So yeah, these are my, picks for 2021. Now, I didn't bring this out, but I am actually just thinking about it right now. If I had to choose a backup, <laughs> if I had to choose a backup for eyeshadow, I love the Viseart Cashmere palette. 
that palette is wonderful. It's neutral, it's a little bit on the cooler side of things, and there's you know some shades in there that look a little bit warmer, but it's really just such a beautiful palette. There's a ton of one and done shades in there. Um, you can create a ton of different looks, and they're just it's just really beautiful. It's a very like elegant and chic palette. So I did just want to mention that as part of this roundup, but yeah, that one's that one's really good. It's really good. There was just so many, so many amazing makeup releases this year. Let's move on to mascara. Hands down, the Wayne Goss uh, Waterproof Mascara. It's what I have on my lashes today. It is phenomenal. It gives my lashes length. It gives them a little bit of separation. It gives them a little bit of heft. I have really, really wimpy lashes. Aside from them being wimpy, they are incredibly straight. So even after I curl them, they usually start to fall. This mascara is one of the few that keeps the curl in my lashes all day, all day. It is amazing, absolutely amazing. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, it doesn't do anything weird. It is a little bit difficult to remove at night, but if I use like an oil-based remover or my Kogan Doe Cleansing Spa Water, it comes right off. So that is definitely, definitely my mascara pick for the year, so, so good. And then, in terms of eyeliner, we are back at Dior. So the Dior eyeliners I enjoyed, but when it came to the Birds of a Feather collection, they came out with all of these like multi-chrome, duochrome, triochrome like eyeliners. And they were so, so beautiful. And I know it's just eyeliner, you know, it's, it doesn't cover that much surface area on your face compared to eyeshadow or blush or whatever but it's like a little, that little special something. So I actually have, I think this is part of their regular line, but this is Sparkling Brown, shade 786. And that's what I have in my waterline. And that's where I like using these eyeliners because they are such fun colors. Um, I like using them in my waterline and it, you know, just gives my eyes a little bit of a pop. You know, I'm not committing to too, you know, crazy of a look. I'm just, you know, doing a little something in my waterline and it's really fun. Um, and these eyeliners are uh, like 24 hour wear. So they don't budge, they don't smudge, they don't move, they don't do anything. Um, so they're really great eyeliners. And at the end, they even have these little smudger sponges. So if you do like line your eyes before it sets down, you can kind of smudge them out if you're doing a smoky eye look. Just really, really great. And like I said, they just have a ton of like really neat, fun colors, ones that are, you know, a little sparkly, uh, ones that shift a little bit, and they're just great. So I had to mention these uh, during this roundup. Okay, and now we're down to lips. So this lip liner really, really impressed me this year. This is the BK Beauty Everlast Lip Liner, and I have the shade Warm Spice on my lips. This is definitely the shade that I have been using the most, and I remember when I opened these up for the first time and saw that these had like an oval shape to them. They're very, very similar to like the Clé de Peau eye brow pencil. Um, and I thought, well, it's kind of weird for lip liner. I would think that I want something a little bit more precise, but I love it. I love it. If you're someone that likes to fill in a little bit with the lip liner and then kind of apply your lipstick or lip gloss on top, this shape is awesome. I hope more people <laughs> adopt this shape for lip liners because it's great. Um, the formula is really wonderful. There's no dragging, really just slips on beautifully. The pigmentation is really lovely. Um, it wears really, really well. They're very comfortable on the lips. I just am so impressed with this formula. So uh, again, this is the BK Beauty Everlast Lip Liner and I really have just been using this warm spice color. This is the warmest shade out of the four uh, shades that were released this year. So love this. And for lipstick, I'm like a broken record, the Armani Lip Power, I have been, you know, I've been loving all the shades that I got and I actually just ordered two more shades, uh, which are coming soon. Um, but I love 202, I love 405, Sultan, that's the first one I got. But the one that I just can't stop using, and you can see how much I've used already, there. This is 102. So this is a nude shade. This is what I have on today. It's the great, perfect, like nude color that I feel like I've, I've always been looking for. And I feel like I finally found it in this beautiful, perfect formula. This formula is so good. It's like creamy. It goes on smoothly. It feels comfortable on the lips, yet it's fairly long wearing. It's not long wearing like a liquid lipstick, but it's fairly long wearing, a lot longer wearing than a regular cream lipstick. And I really don't know what the magic is, but it's incredible. And then the form factor 
of this lipstick that it's pointed just makes it so easy to put on. With this color, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but the two other colors that I have, which are deeper, 202 and 405, it just makes it so easy, so super easy. So I, I just, I can't get enough of these uh, lip powers. They're so good. And I mean, there's a ton of colors already, but I hope they come out with more. <laughs> Just come out with more. Um, so that is definitely my pick for uh, 2021. And lip gloss. So this lip gloss is, well, I have two to mention because one is limited edition and I think they're phasing it out, but it is on sale right now. So I wanted to mention it. And if this was permanent, this would definitely be my lip gloss pick for 2021. Uh, but it's the Tom Ford Sunlust lip gloss. So this is the one that came out I think earlier in the year, it was part of their Soleil collection, Soleil Neige collection. I'm not sure, I've completely lost track. But this is such a cool lip gloss because it looks completely gold in the tube, but it turns into uh, this really beautiful, like fleshy peach color with uh, some gold sparkles in it. So it just makes your lips look really plump, really smooth. There's something very like, I don't know, it almost makes your lips look like mannequin-like, like just very, very smooth. There's something about the peachy color that it turns into also. It's just, yeah, it's almost uh, like unreal looking and it's phenomenal. And the formula is phenomenal. It's um, just kind of a typical lip gloss, very, not sticky, uh, just really feels comfortable. All the things that I wanna say for lip gloss, I can say for this one. So yes, right now I, th I believe it's still on sale. I think it's marked down to $29. And I've already bought a backup, otherwise I would buy another backup, but I love this. This was phenomenal. But because that's limited edition, I did want to make mention of a lip gloss that is, that's not limited edition, it's just part of someone's regular line. And these just came into my life. These are the Make Beauty Serum Balms. I have all five shades, <laughs> I love them all. Um, I usually throw on Nude Nova, is that the name? Nude Nova and Halo Moon. Those are the two shades that I wear the most. The other three are just as gorgeous. These are not heavily tinted uh, lip products. They're very, very light. So they just give your lips like a very subtle wash. Um, but what's so amazing about them, I mean, the colors I think are really pretty and very, very becoming and complimentary on your lips, but it's the formula. These are serum balms. And so they, they feel like a lip mask. I put them on and my lips feel relieved. And even after they've like soaked in or whatever, I feel like my lips are moisturized for quite some time. It's not like I feel like I have to keep reapplying and reapplying, like my lips feel dry after it dries down. Not at all. They actually really like nourish my lips. So I love them. Love these Make Beauty um, serum balms. All of them are just phenomenal. And I've mentioned this before, but I'll make mention of it again. They also come in the most amazing package. So if you want to purchase them for like a stocking stuffer or a gift. I mean, I just think these are like the best little tubes. It's just so cool, the whole thing. And then of course, all made better by the fact that the actual product is incredible. And then one last thing I wanna mention is my favorite brush set release of 2021. Of course, I love my Esum collab brush set collection that I did with them. That is still available. Of course, I'll link that down below. But I wanted to mention these Sonia G Fusion Series brushes that are created for cream products. And because I love cream products so much, I was so excited for this brush set. And they, I mean, not only did they meet my expectations, I think they exceeded my expectations. They are just so good. This is the jumbo base. I use this, uh, I actually used it today to put on my uh, Chantecaille Future Skin Cushion Foundation. And then this is classic base. And I love using this for contour or cream bronzer or cream blush. It's perfect for that. This one is the mini base which is the perfect size. These are all sold separately. You can get them as a set or you can get them individually. And if you had to get one, I would recommend this one because it's, it's the most versatile. It's the one that's in the middle size-wise. And so you can use it for foundation if you want. You can use it for blush, um, cream highlight. You can even use it for like a one and done cream shadow if you want. It's a little bit big for that, but you could if you wanted. It's just great. So uh, that's the mini base. And then we've got the soft concealer and then the jumbo concealer. And these are great for any smaller 
areas basically. So I kind of use both of these for like cream shadows, for concealer, for blending in around my nose, just all the like smaller areas. I just love this brush set. So I just wanted to give this brush set a shout out because it's so, so phenomenal. Okay, so that is my best of 2021. I'm actually starting to lose my voice, so I'm glad I'm done. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this Mishmas video. I will be back tomorrow with another video for you. Please subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.